involving routine and non-routine problems involving divisibility rules. Hello there students! Welcome back to my classroom. For today's lesson, you are going to learn how to solve routine and non-routine problems involving divisibility rules. Let's go! West Fairview Elementary School will be having a recognition ceremony for Grade 5 Honor students. They will arrange seats for 50 boys and 40 girls in such a way that there are an equal number of seats per row. Now, what are the possible common numbers of seats in each row? Do you know how can we solve this problem? We can use the four-step method to solve this problem. Step 1. Understand Let us understand what is being asked in the situation or problem. Here, we need to identify the possible common numbers of seats in each row. Next, let's determine the given data that will help us solve the problem. We are given 50 boys and 40 girls. Step 2. Plan We need to ask ourselves of the strategy that we can use to solve this problem. Since we need to find the common numbers of seats for 50 boys and 40 girls, we should find the common factors of 50 and 40. We can use the divisibility rules to find these common factors. Step 3. Solve First, let's find the common factors of 50 and 40 using the divisibility rules. Let's ask ourselves, are they divisible by 2? To check if they are divisible by 2, check if the last digits are 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, or if they are even numbers. Since both 50 and 40 end in 0, they are divisible by 2. Let's get the other factor by dividing them by 2. There you go. Next, divisibility by 3. Let's check if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. For 50, let's have 5 plus 0 which is 5, which is not divisible by 3. For 40, that's 4 plus 0 which is 4, which is also not divisible by 3. Next, divisibility by 4. Check if the last two digits are divisible by 4 or if they are zeros. For 50, the last two digits are 50, which is not divisible by 4. For 40, the last two digits are 40, which is divisible by 4. Dividing 4 gives us 10. Next, divisibility by 5. Check if the last digit is 5 or 0. Both 50 and 40 end in 0, so they are divisible by 5. So let's divide them by 5 to get the other factor. 50 divided by 5 equals 10, while 40 divided by 5 is 8. Next, divisibility by 6. We learned that a number is divisible by 6 if it is divisible both by 2 and 3. Since 50 and 40 are divisible by 2, but not by 3, we can say that they are not divisible by 6. Now let's try if they are divisible by 8. Check if the last 3 digits are divisible by 8 or if they are zeros. For 50, the last 3 digits are 0, 050, 0, which is not divisible by 8. While for 40, the last two digits are 40, which is divisible by 8. We can see that we already got 8 as the other factor when we divide 40 by 5. Next, let's have divisibility by 9. Check if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. For 50, that's 5 plus 0, which is 5, which is not divisible by 9. For 40, that's 40 plus 0, which is 4, which is also not divisible by 9. This time, let's try divisibility by 10. Check if the last digit is 0. Both 50 and 40 end in 0, so they are divisible by 10. We can see that we already got 10 as the other factor 
when we divide 50 by 5 and 40 by 4. And lastly, please note that all numbers are divisible by 1. 50 divided by 1 gives us the other factor 50, while 40 divided by 1 gives us the other factor as 40. Now, let us list down all the factors. For 50, we have factors 1, 2, 5, 10, 25, and 50. For 40, the factors are 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 20, and 40. Here, the common factors of 40 and 50 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. Therefore, the possible common numbers of seats in each row are 1, 2, 5, and 10. Wonderful! Now let's go to your last step. Check and look back. This step is optional but helpful to ensure our answer is correct. We can use the opposite operation and multiply the factors or use another strategy like prime factorization to verify our results. In this example, we will use the opposite operation which is multiplying the factors to see if the answer is 50 and 40. There you go! Moving forward, let's have another problem as an example. Colin is willing to give a reward to whoever guesses his age this year. His clues state that his age is divisible by 12 and is multiple of 9, and that his age is less than 51 years old. Now, how old is Colin? Again, how can we solve this problem? Yes, we can solve this problem using our four-step method. Step 1. Understand. Let's understand what is being asked in this situation or problem. Here, we need to identify Colin's age this year. Next, let's determine the given data to help us understand and solve the problem. Here, we are given clues such as the age is divisible by 12, multiple of 9, and less than 51. Step 2. Plan Now, what will be our strategy to solve this problem? Since there are only few numbers less than 51 that are divisible both by 12 and 9, we will use the listing method and elimination method. Step 3. Solve Let's list down all the numbers that are divisible by 12 and are below 51. To do this, we write down the multiples of 12. That will be 12, 24, 36, and 48. Now let's list down the multiples of 9 that are below 51. And that will be 9, 18, 27, 36, and 45. Next, let's eliminate the uncommon numbers and look for the common multiple. And that's 36. Therefore, Colin's age is 36. On to our last step, check and look back. This step is again optional but helpful to ensure if our answer is correct. We can double check to confirm that 36 is divisible by both 12 and 9 by dividing 36 by 12 and 9. There you go! Or you may also use the divisibility rules mentally to determine whether they are divisible by 12 and 9. Wonderful! You made it this far, students! Now here are the things that you learned today. 